Iroquois nations consisted of five tribes indigenous to modern-day New York State. They had distinctly different customs and languages. Until the mid-15th century, conflict between the nations was endemic. At this time, legend has it, Degandawida was born the son of a virgin mother in the nation of the Hurons in modern-day Ontario. Degandawida was a visionary thinker. Indeed, his name means he the thinker. He received an idyllic vision of peace that he would dedicate his life to. He wandered east toward the conflicts and into the land of the Mohawks with his great plan. But due to his speech problem, he had little ability to express his genius. The Mohawks had been stuck in endless war with the neighboring Onondagas. Then from out of the wilderness came Daganawida, an objective man of no tribal loyalty, only a vision of great peace. He proposed his great vision to the Mohawks, but they were unconvinced. So what he lacked in mortal speech, he decided to prove in supernatural deed. He climbed a tall pine tree over a deep gorge that descended into the Mohawk River and then asked the Mohawks to cut down the tree. They accepted the test. The Gandawida plunged into the rapids below and a few moments later mysteriously climbed out of the gorge completely unharmed. The Mohawks needed no further proof, but convincing their Onondaga foes of the vision would be quite another matter. At this point, the Ganawida met a deeply depressed wanderer, an Onondaga man whose wife and seven daughters had recently been killed in the senseless violence. Ironically, the man had lost his family not at the hands of the enemy Mohawks, but at the hands of his own chief, Ododaro. Ododaro ruled with an iron fist. He was said to be an evil man whose hair crawled of snakes. The depressed wanderer was a very articulate man. Degandawida respected this attribute and soon taught the wanderer his vision for great peace and the importance of loving everyone, including enemies. The wanderer's vengeful heart underwent a miraculous transformation and he became Degandawida's loyal disciple. Together with Degandawida, the wanderer approached the evil Ododaro. The wanderer, through his moving speech, managed to convert the monster into a dedicated adherent to the Great Peace. In so doing, it is said the wanderer combed the snakes from Ododaro's hair, thus receiving the name Hiawatha, or He Who Combs. With the Mohawks and Onondagas as the nucleus, the Cayugas, Oneidas, and Senecas soon saw the wisdom in joining the Confederacy that came to be known as the League of Five Nations. Degandawida crowned the achievement with this speech. I, Degandawida, with the Confederate Lords of the Five Nations, plant the tree of the Great Peace. I plant it in your territory, Ododaro, and in that of the Onondaga Nation, in the territory of which you are the firekeeper. We spread the soft, white, feathery down of the globe thistle as seats for you and your cousin lords. If any man of any nation outside the Five Nations shall desire to obey the laws of the Great Peace, he may trace the roots to their source, and he shall be welcome. The shadow of the tree will be pleasant and beautiful. Never again shall man walk in fear. All the peoples of mankind will dwell there in peace and tranquility. We will have one head, one tongue, and one blood in our bodies, and at the top of the tree sits Skajina, the eagle. He watches all ways and will warn us when he sees approaching that which brings destruction and death. So, I, Degandawida, and the Confederate Lords now uproot the tallest pine tree, and into the hole we cast all the weapons of war. We bury them from sight forever and plant again the tree. With his mission complete, Degandawida said, Now I shall be seen no more, and go whither none can follow. Then Degandawida boarded a luminous white canoe on the shore of Lake Onondaga, and paddled toward a setting sun, never to be seen again. Three centuries later, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and George Washington would all become familiar with the Iroquois Confederacy and its great law of peace. In the European examples of governance, they found no effective model for how to unite the colonies or frame a democratic constitution, but in the Iroquois system, a clear blueprint was drawn from which to begin work on both of these tasks. 200 years later, in 1988, the U.S. Senate formally recognized the contributions of the Iroquois Confederacy to the Confederation of the Original Thirteen Colonies and to the development of the United States Constitution itself. A fitting honor indeed to De Canoida and the Great Peace. Yeah.